So you want some sodium. Aw, oh, gee, what a shame. It's in group one. You can't get group one elements in their pure form in nature. I guess you can't go out and dig any sodium up. But you know what you could do? You could decompose a compound that has sodium in it. And then you can get your sodium. Well, what kind of compound might have sodium in it? Well, I don't know. What about sodium chloride? If you could find a way of decomposing sodium chloride, not only will you get sodium, but you'll also get chlorine. Yay! Your pool will be safe to swim in. There's two ways that you can do a decomposition reaction. One, you can use extreme heat. Now, this can be done, but it's extremely dangerous and it's also extremely expensive. Or, you could use electricity, which is a lot less dangerous and a lot less expensive. How do we do this? Using a process called electrolysis, where you can get group 1 and 2 metals as well as group 17 nonmetals, and you can separate them from their compound using electrical current from a source of electricity. Uh, this is a source of direct current. All direct current means is that the electrons always go out one way and always go in the other, as opposed to alternating current, which is what you get when you plug things into the wall. That's why a lot of devices have power bricks. Most electronic devices run on direct current. For example, this little photo frame here. The problem is the wall gives out alternating current. So what we need is some sort of device that can convert alternating current into direct current. Now, if you have one of these, you can use electricity through the wall current. You just need to make sure it goes through a DC converter. So we want to decompose an ionic solid. Here's how it works. Sodium goes from plus one to zero. It undergoes reduction. Chlorine goes from negative one up to zero. It's being oxidized. Now this is backwards of what metals and nonmetals would usually prefer. Remember, metals would tend to lose electrons, and once they've lost their electrons, they have a stable octet, and they're happy to stay that way forever. Nonmetals are the same way. They gain enough electrons to make a stable octet, and once they've got it, that's it. They don't want anything else to do with electrons. So what you've got to do is get the metal ion and force feed it an electron, and then you can turn it into solid sodium. You can take this chlorine and strip away one of its electrons, and it'll become charge zero. The stages are to melt the ionic solid, because this has to be in the liquid phase, so the ions are free to move around. Put electrodes into the ionic liquid from a source of direct current. The metal ion will be reduced at the negative cathode. And wait a minute, I thought the cathode was positive. Didn't you say that, Mr. Rosengarten, in the last set of videos? Well, in a battery, the cathode is positive. But in an electrolytic cell, it's an opposite process, has an opposite sign. You'll understand more as I show you the diagram. The nonmetal ion will be oxidized at the positive anode. So what we do is we take our source of sodium chloride. It's going to contain sodium ions and chloride ions that are free to move around because it's in the liquid phase. Into this sodium chloride from a DC power supply, also known as a battery, we're going to have an electrode that goes in and another electrode that goes in. Like, now what happens is the battery's negative end, the anode, loses electrons. So this is the anode of the battery, and electrons come out of it, right? The battery's negative end loses electrons. These negative electrons go into this metal strip that's nothing more than an extension of the, a negative electrode. That's still the negative end of the battery. Now, with all these negative electrons, what's attracted to a negative charge? A positive charge. So the sodium comes over here and is force-fed the electron. The sodium turns into solid sodium, solid Na. And then when you pull this out, you can actually fish a big chunk of sodium out. Now over on the other side, the negative end of the battery, the cathode, the end that electrons go into, okay, here's an electron. An electron is going to get pulled off this side and go up into the battery. But here's the question, okay? Who's, where's that electron going to come from? Well, there's a nice electron sitting here on chlorine. So chlorine wanders over to investigate. All right, here comes another chlorine over to investigate. And all of a sudden, boom! One electron gets stripped off and goes back into the battery. Boom! Another electron gets stripped off and goes back into the battery. When the two chlorines lose their valence electrons, 
it turns into chlorine gas and bubbles up. And then you can actually trap that gas by siphoning it off to the side. That's how you can get chlorine to, to disinfect your swimming pool. Just take a compound with chloride in it, you can get your chlorine. Here's another example, lithium fluoride. Lithium is plus one and it's going to turn into charge of zero. It's reduced. Li plus one will gain an electron and turn into Li zero. The F minus one turns into F two zero. So F minus one turns into F two zero, but I have to balance the Brinkelhoff. We have minus two on this side, so two electrons are lost. So once again, we've got our container. We're going to put lithium fluoride into it. And that lithium fluoride will be in the liquid state so the ions are free to move around. We're going to take some electrodes and hook those electrodes up to a source of direct current, a battery. There we go. Now, what end of the battery do electrons come out of? That's right, the anode. So here come the electrons, yeah, and into the negative electrode. The positive lithium gets attracted to it, picks up that electron, and turns into solid lithium, which gathers all around here, Li0. Fluorine, on the other hand, has its valence electron stripped from it. How many electrons get stripped from it? Two electrons get stripped from it. When F- minus gets attracted to the positive electrode, gives up its electrons and turns into fluorine gas. There it goes. Now remember what we said in the last unit that electrons always travel from anode to cathode? Anode to cathode. That makes this the load because it's being powered by the battery. Because electrons always go from anode to cathode, the anode to the cathode. Lithium is at the cathode here. Why? Because reduction is taking place. Red cat. Wow. And then electrons travel from the anode to the cathode. Why is this the anode? Because the fluorine is being oxidized. Anox. And that's why the cathode is negative here. The anode of the battery is negative. The cathode of the cell is negative. The anode of this cell is positive, the cathode of the voltaic cell is positive. Positive and negative is dictated by the DC power supply. Anode and cathode is dictated by oxidation and reduction. Because there's oxidation taking place here, because electrons are being lost here, that's the anode. Because electrons are being gained here, that's the cathode. Because electrons are being gained here, right, look at the direction the electrons are going. Because electrons are being gained here, that's the cathode. And because electrons are being lost here, right, look at the electrons, that would be the anode. Electrons always go from anode to cathode, anode to cathode.